In this video, we're breaking down 11 After Effects tricks that every editor should know using built-in or free plugins. These are our go-to effects that we use on pretty much every project we do here. So let's get started with Fred and we'll dive straight into our top picks. All right, guys, Fred here. And first effect on our list is called Quick Chromatic Aberration 2. It is a free plugin I use on pretty much all of my videos to add a retro touch to text, logos, and motion elements. So you'll see it's pretty subtle, but I think it's super cool. So first thing you wanna do is um, create a new adjustment layer and throw on the Quick Chromatic Aberration 2 effect. I always leave the settings to default, but if you want to go crazier with it, you can crank up the values to get a RGB split effect. Chromatic Aberration honestly changed my entire perspective on adding texture to visuals. And speaking of adding texture, this next effect on our list is an amazing one, and I'm talking about glow. Matter of fact, I kind of need to chill because I've started adding glow to pretty much everything. So once again, what you want to do is create an adjustment layer, place it above the elements you're trying to add glow to, and then head over to the stylize category and click on the glow effect. To get the best results, I suggest you change the glow operation from add to screen. We can then start to play around with the values. I like to increase the radius and the intensity a bit, uh, but it's really going to depend on the asset you're applying it on. I found this cool trick where you add a second glow effect to the same layer, but this time leave the glow operation to add. By doing so, the first instance is going to be controlling the spread, whereas the second one is going to be focused on what's happening directly to the text or logo itself. Once again, the values are very subjective, but just go for what you feel looks good. Next, click on glow color and change it to A and B to add a tint effect to your glow. And just like that, you've elevated a boring white asset to something that feels a lot more polished. If you want to go the extra mile, I suggest you guys check out Deep Glow, which is a paid plugin that allows you to get physically accurate glow. You can definitely get the same results with the built-in one, but it's definitely going to take a few more clicks. All right, now onto something a little bit different. Let's take a look at my favorite Adobe After Effects expression, aka the wiggle expression. First thing you'd want to do is create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to rename mine to Flicker because that's the effect we're going to be going for. And then uh, we can add the color correction exposure effect. From there, hold out on your keyboard and click on the little stopwatch next to the exposure setting. You should see a box pop up and we can type in wiggle and open the first bracket. The first digits represent the frequency and the second one, the intensity. Hit enter and you should see a nice flicker effect applied to your asset. Wiggle has to be one of the most powerful expression available in AE and if you want to learn more about what you can do with it, make sure to check out our video called the only Adobe After Effects expression you should care about. All right, Ez back here and let's move on to the next of our favorite effects here in After Effects, displacement map. Take something like this VHS overlay. Typically you bring in the file and a layer above your footage, set a blending mode, and then kind of stop there. And you have this kind of okay feeling VHS effects. But if we apply a displacement map to our footage layer, and then set the displacement map layer to that VHS overlay, we can turn up the values and start seeing some pretty unique distortion based on how that VHS overlay is now affecting our footage. Displacement maps essentially allow you to use the values of one layer to visually affect another. And this concept works on way more than just footage. Let's take this logo, for example, and let's use this cloth footage as our displacement layer. We can repeat all the same steps that we did last time using the cloth layer as our displacement map, setting these dropdowns to luminance, since this is a black and white piece of footage, and then dragging up the parameters until we're happy. And you can see that our super basic logo is starting to get this really unique distortion based off the movement of that fabric. Then take it a step further. Let's turn our fabric layer back on and set the blending mode to multiply so that only the whites let that fabric footage through. And you can see that we have this crazy unique animation happening from just a couple clicks right here in AE. All right, this next effect is kind of a weird one and probably not gonna be one that you hear a lot of other creators talking about, but I love using this effect to find some weird sort of happy accidents. You wanna go ahead and set your gradient layer one and two to the same layer that you've applied the effect to. Then open up the X, Y, and Z position tabs, set the source of all three to intensity one. And as we turn these on, we'll start to get these interesting sort of hard looking particles on our footage. 
Now, as we turn up our row counts, you'll see that these really giant kind of looking cards turn into these super fine, sandy kind of feeling particles that add a really unique texture to our footage. Now we can turn down the multiplier on the X and Y position tabs, and you'll see that now just the Z position is being affected. Now we can take it even one further step and apply a wiggle expression like we learned earlier to that Z position multiplier. We're gonna use wiggle and three comma three for this. And as we play back, you'll see that our particles are now pulsing in and out of Z space and giving us a look that literally looks like a million bucks. All right, really quick, if this video is helpful, be sure to subscribe so we can keep creating this type of content. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our full editing masterclass called Happy Editing, where me and my friends teach you everything you need to know to become a video editing master. Link is in the description below. The next effect on our list of favorites is one called Grid, and it basically helps you create just that. To get started, we're gonna to go to Layer, New, and create a new solid layer. We're gonna make this pretty big, like 5,000 by 5,000, so that it's dramatically bigger than our comp, and set the color to white. Then we're gonna to go to Effect, Generate, Grid. Go ahead and change the Size From dropdown to Width Slider, so that we have a perfectly symmetrical grid. Then we can adjust the sizing and thickness of our grid. Next, come down to your layer and click the Enable 3D toggle. Then when we open up our transform properties, we can set our rotation to 90 degrees and move the position down in Y space to see this sort of infinite plane effect start to take shape. Now, straight off the bat, this doesn't have any movement. So we're gonna go ahead and set keyframes, one at the beginning, and then move down and we're gonna slide our Z position a little bit further down so that as time passes, it moves closer towards us. Then we can pre-compose this entire layer, which is kind of like a nested sequence if you're familiar with Premiere Pro. And we can apply another effect called Mirror. Set this effect to 90 degrees and we're gonna see that we have a perfectly symmetrical sort of roof on top of our grid floor. Now we can stylize this by adding a tint effect to change the color. We can add some glows and chromatic aberration and boom, just like that in a couple clicks, we've got a super interesting retro grid effect. The cool thing about this is once this composition is set up, you can actually click back into your white layer pre-comp and instead of grid, we can actually go to generate checkerboard and now we have the exact same effect, but with a black and white checkerboard that we can stylize and move all the same ways. Next one on the list is called FX Console, and it is a free plugin from Video Copilot that allows you to drastically speed up your workflow. Just hit Control Spacebar to pull up the UI, and as you can see, you can browse the entire effects library super quickly. Obviously, it doesn't stop there. Uh, click the little gear icon, and on your right, you'll see that you can add favorites. This feature is super cool because it allows you to add your go-tos and label them with aliases. So if we take, for example, Gaussian Blur, uh, I'm gonna type in Blur as the alias, and then whenever I'm typing Blur into the FX console, the first one that pulls up is the one I'm always using, which is Gaussian Blur. You can also use the screenshot feature, which is gonna take a screenshot of the current frame in your preview tab, and then you can browse all of your screenshots in one super responsive library. I find myself using this feature a ton whenever I'm unsure of certain creative decisions. You can compare up to four frames at a time and it is honestly so useful for when you're torn between a few colors or fonts. I absolutely love using After Effects to build engaging text animation and kinetic text sequences. Over here on the right, there's a ton of text animation presets. And one of my favorite go-tos is Typewriter. Simply drag it onto your text layer you can change the speed and adjust all of that, of course, with keyframes. But if you toggle down into the advanced options, there's this little switch at the bottom that says randomize. And by toggling this on and off, you get a really cool sort of random effect uh, that just kind of brings this look up a whole notch. Now we can pair this with another of our favorite effects called CC Cylinder. When we apply CC Cylinder to our text, you can see that we start getting this kind of cool uh, halo effect that really gives that animation a whole new sense of dimension. There's built-in rotation and lighting parameters that make it super, super easy to just add a unique pop to a title. 
All right, one more little kinetic text trick here, but you can actually draw something like a circle or in this case, a rectangle using the mask tool on a text layer. And if we toggle down to find the path properties, we can actually assign our text to a specific mask. Let's choose this rectangle we just created and instantly you can see that the text is now following that shape. And when we adjust this first margin parameter and set a keyframe to animate it, we get this movement around the shape that feels really special. Now keep in mind this works for literally any mask, so you can do it on a circle or a squiggly line. Just get creative and have fun with it. After Effects offers some really incredible tiling tools which allow you to quickly duplicate and scale a simple logo or footage layer into countless iterations to create patterns and unique effects. In the case of CC Reptile, you get some really cool features that allow you to change the angle or rotation of the object that you're tiling. You can get creative and add a simple position keyframe as well as a camera with some depth of field. And just like that, you get a really unique asset that you could use for a motion background or logo animation or anything like that. Be sure to also check out Motion Tile, which gives you some interesting parameters like phase shifting to play with that can come in really handy on some projects. Well, there you have it. That's our top 11 free effects for Adobe After Effects. If you wanna check out 11 more, we have a video on the top 11 free effects in Premiere Pro. And until next time, happy editing.